Hello everyone, sorry for jumping in before the episode, but I just want to tell you all about the Thinking in English Patreon. Patreon is a way for you guys to support Thinking in English and receive some amazing benefits. We have conversation clubs at least six times a week, allowing you to practice your English speaking. We offer weekly discussion sessions with English tutors, including me, where you can ask any questions you have. We have a Discord server and chat rooms, so you can talk and meet other English learners and practice English. I release bonus episodes every Friday, and depending on your subscription level, there are also free English group classes and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me available. There are also some new and exciting new benefits coming in the next few weeks, so join now! I'm currently offering 7 day free trials if you join right now. Click the link in the description or go to www.patreon.com forward slash thinking in English to join now. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. The seven wonders of the ancient world were monumental structures, engineering marvels and fantastic creations that were famous throughout ancient Greece and its neighbouring societies. Today, let's take a look at these seven wonders, their history and their eventual fate. You can find the full transcript for this episode over on the Thinking in English blog with extra vocabulary available too. Here is today's vocabulary list. Wonder Wonder An extraordinary and awe-inspiring creation or phenomenon. For example, the ancient Greeks made lists of the greatest wonders they found on their travels. Structure Structure A building or construction, typically with a purpose or function, such as a monument, temple or pyramid. As in, the seven wonders of the ancient world contain some of the most famous and important structures of all time. Subject of debate Subject of debate Something that is a matter of discussion, disagreement or uncertainty among scholars, historians or experts. For instance, some of these wonders remain the subject of debate among historians and archaeologists. Intricate Intricate Highly detailed, complex and finely crafted often involving many small and precise elements or patterns. For instance, the statue was sculpted with intricate details on the face and body. Marvel Marvel An object, creation or phenomenon that inspires a sense of wonder and admiration due to its exceptional quality, beauty or significance. As in, that temple was an engineering marvel. To adorn, to adorn, to decorate or embellish something, often with ornaments, details or decorative elements to enhance its appearance. As in, the sculpture was adorned with beautiful decorations and carvings. To commission, to commission, to officially request or hire someone to create a particular work or project. As in, the structure was commissioned by an ancient king. Monumental, monumental. Of exceptional size, significance or importance. For example, some of the wonders were designed as monumental tombs, while others were designed to honour the gods. The Seven Wonders of the Ancient World are a collection of remarkable structures and creations from the ancient societies of Greece, Egypt, Rome and the Middle East. These wonders were considered the pinnacle of human achievement during their time, and they still have a place today in modern culture. While many of these wonders have long since vanished, 
their stories and legacies continue. The concept of the Seven Wonders dates back to ancient Greece, where they were initially listed by various scholars and writers. These early lists referred to sights or things to be seen, rather than wonders, meaning that the ancient wonders were a kind of guidebook or travel recommendations. This also explains the locations of the ancient wonders. They were written and described by mainly Greek historians, writers and explorers. As the Greeks travelled, they discovered great sites in Egypt, the islands of Greece, modern Turkey and the Middle East. This is why there are no ancient wonders on this list from South or East Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa or the Americas. The Greeks or the writers didn't reach there. So the seven wonders I'm going to look at today are the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, the Colossus of Rhodes and the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Each of these wonders has a unique history, architectural significance and cultural importance. I will apologise before we start for any mispronunciations um, of Greek or Turkish or Arabic words because there will be some in this episode and my Greek pronunciation is not the best. But let's start with the only wonder still existing today. The Great Pyramid of Giza. The Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Khufu or the Pyramid of Cheops, is a magnificent structure located on the Giza Plateau just outside of Cairo, Egypt. It has been considered one of the seven wonders of the world for thousands of years and is the only ancient wonder still in existence today. The story of the Great Pyramid begins around 2580 BC, during the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom of Egypt. Pharaoh Khufu, also known as Cheops, commissioned its construction as his final resting place. The pyramid was designed as a monumental tomb, built to house his remains after his death and help him in his journey to the afterlife. Khufu, as emperor of a great civilization, was able to create one of the largest tombs in history. His pyramid was the tallest man-made structure in the world for over 3,800 years, originally 146 metres tall. The scale of the pyramid is evidence of the advanced mathematical and astronomical knowledge possessed by the ancient Egyptian architects and engineers. One of the enduring mysteries of the Great Pyramid is how it was built. The pyramid required a vast workforce, primarily composed of skilled labourers, engineers and artisans. Evidence suggests that this workforce was not just made up of slaves, as once thought, but rather a skilled and well-organised labour force. They quarried massive stones, transported them and expertly placed them. It is constructed using massive limestone and granite blocks, some weighing up to 80 tonnes. These blocks were transported from quarries located several kilometres away, which is a remarkable achievement. The inner chambers of the pyramid include the king's chamber, the queen's chamber and various passageways. These chambers were designed with great precision and their purpose is still a subject of debate among experts. The Great Pyramid of Giza holds immense historical and cultural significance. It represents ancient Egyptian architectural achievements and their religious beliefs surrounding the afterlife. As one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, it remains a symbol of human achievement, a monument that has stood the test of time and continues to inspire wonder and curiosity. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, a wonder of the ancient world shrouded in myth and legend, 
have captured the imaginations of people for centuries. The origins of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon are mysterious and debated. They are often attributed to Nebuchadnezzar II, a king of ancient Babylon, who supposedly built these terraced gardens in the 6th century BC as a gift for his wife, Amatis of Media. While their existence is documented in ancient texts, the details and precise location of these gardens remain the subject of debate among historians. The Hanging Gardens were celebrated for their innovative design. The gardens were apparently built on a series of terraces, with each level supported by a system of arches, columns and a complex irrigation system. The English name, Hanging Gardens, is a translation from a Greek word which has a broader definition, referring to raised structures such as terraces. Soil was imported and a wide variety of plants and trees were cultivated, some of which were not native to the region. This remarkable feat of engineering supposedly allowed for the vegetation to flourish on elevated platforms. Despite their recognition as a wonder, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon remain a subject of debate and mystery. The gardens are the only one of the seven wonders with no definite evidence that they actually existed. Some scholars question their existence, suggesting that they may have been a product of the imagination or confusion with other gardens. The lack of direct archaeological evidence adds to this mystery surrounding the gardens. Whether real or mythical, these gardens symbolise the human desire to create beauty and escape the limitations of the natural world. Their inclusion among the seven wonders of the ancient world demonstrate the impact they had on the imagination of both ancient and modern societies. The Statue of Zeus at Olympia the statue of Zeus at Olympia was a masterpiece of ancient Greek sculpture and engineering. It was crafted in the 5th century BC by renowned Greek sculptor Phidias. It was commissioned to stand on the Temple of Zeus in Olympia, Greece, which was dedicated to the king of Greek gods, Zeus, also the god of sky and the god of thunder. The statue of Zeus was a colossal statue, standing over 12 metres tall, depicting Zeus seated on a throne. Phidias and his team of skilled artisans sculpted the statue using ivory, precious jewels and gold. They spent countless hours carving Zeus's facial features and the intricate details of his robe and ornaments. It was not only an artistic masterpiece, but also an engineering marvel. Its massive size and weight presented a significant challenge. The statue's frame was constructed from a combination of wood, metal and stone to provide support for the precious materials. The statue played a vital role in the religious and cultural life of ancient Greece. It was not only a tribute to the god Zeus, but also a place for religious ceremonies and offerings. Pilgrims from across the region would visit Olympia to witness the statue and worship the king of gods. The Roman historian Livy reported that Romans who travelled to the statue were moved to their souls as if they had seen the god in person. Like most of the wonders of the ancient world, the statue of Zeus no longer exists. In 391 AD, the Christian Roman Emperor banned pagan religions, so religions with multiple gods, and the Temple of Zeus fell out of use. No one really knows what happened to the statue. One legend states it was taken to Constantinople and destroyed in a fire in the year 475. Other legends suggest it was destroyed by a fire in the Temple of Zeus, in 425. Whatever happened to the statue of Zeus, it was one of the greatest spectacles in history. The Temple of Artemis at Ephesus The Temple of Artemis, 
also known as the Artemisium, was dedicated to the Greek goddess Artemis, the goddess of hunting, wilderness and childbirth. It stood in the city of Ephesus, an important ancient Greek city located in present-day Turkey. The temple's construction was part of a centuries-old tradition honouring Artemis, and it was believed to have been the very spot where the goddess was born. The construction of the Temple of Artemis spanned several centuries. The first known temple on the site was built around 800 BC, but it was a relatively modest structure. The most famous and grand iteration of the temple was initiated by the Lydian king Croesus and completed around 550 BC. It was giant measuring over 115 metres in length and 55 metres in width. Its majestic columns were covered with intricate carvings and sculptures. The Temple of Artemis was more than just a religious site. It also served as a hub of economic activity and pilgrimage. The temple complex included a marketplace, making Ephesus a centre for trade and commerce. Pilgrims from around the ancient world would journey to Ephesus to pay homage to Artemis and offer tributes to the goddess. The temple's design was a marvel of classical Greek architecture. It featured a forest of tall and graceful columns supporting the roof, each carved with intricate reliefs and covered in ornate decorations. The temple also housed a statue of Artemis, crafted by the renowned sculptor Praxiteles. The temple was destroyed and rebuilt on multiple occasions. A flood destroyed the first version of the temple, the second version was burned down, and the third temple was destroyed after the Romans converted to Christianity. The legacy of the Temple of Artemis endures despite its eventual destruction, it served as a source of inspiration for architects, artists and scholars throughout the ages. While the original temple no longer stands, fragments of it can be found in museums and archaeological sites. The Mausoleum at Halicarnassus The Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, often simply called the Mausoleum, was constructed in the 4th century BC in the ancient city of Halicarnassus located in modern-day Bodrum, Turkey. It was commissioned by Mausolus, a governor of the Persian Empire, and his wife, and also sister, Artemisia II. It was designed to be the final resting place for Mausolus, and it was also meant to honour his legacy as a ruler. The monument was a fusion of Greek and Lycian architectural styles, reflecting the multicultural influences of the region. Renowned architects and artists, including Pythias of Prienne, were hired to bring his vision to life. Rising over 45 metres into the sky, the mausoleum was crowned with a pyramid-shaped roof, adorned with sculptures and statues. The exterior was adorned with intricate friezes, statues of deities, and detailed reliefs, depicting scenes from Greek mythology, battles, and the lives of Mausolus and his wife. The structure featured multiple levels and chambers, making it a complex and imposing monument. The mausoleum was not just a grand tomb, but also a symbol of love and devotion between Mausolus and his wife. It became a pilgrimage site for those wishing to pay tribute to the couple's legacy and to see the structure itself. Although the mausoleum at Halicarnassus suffered damage over the centuries, including earthquakes and the removal of its marble for other building projects, its influence on later architecture cannot be overstated. In fact, in English, the term mausoleum has come to mean grand tomb in general. It is not known how the mausoleum was destroyed. It was probably due to an earthquake or series of earthquakes around a thousand years ago. Many of the stones from the mausoleum were used by the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem to strengthen their castle in the city of Bodrum. 
the monument was considered as one of the seven wonders of the world, not due to its size, but due to its beauty and appearance. The Colossus of Rhodes The Colossus of Rhodes, a colossal bronze statue that once graced the island of Rhodes, is another of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Rhodes, a thriving Greek island in the eastern Mediterranean, became the site of a monumental structure in the 3rd century BC. The Colossus of Rhodes was commissioned to commemorate the successful defence of the island against the invading forces from Demetrius I of Macedon in the year 305 BC. The statue was designed as a tribute to the Greek sun god Helios, the patron deity of Rhodes, symbolising the divine protection that had safeguarded and protected the island. The construction of the Colossus was the work of a famous sculptor who oversaw a team of skilled craftsmen. Standing approximately 33 metres tall, the statue was a remarkable feat of ancient engineering. It was constructed from bronze plates forged individually and then assembled over an iron framework. The level of detail and artistry in the statue's design was apparently breathtaking with Helios depicted holding a torch in one hand and a trident in the other. The Colossus of Rhodes symbolised not only the protection of the gods, but also the determination of the people of Rhodes. It was a source of inspiration and pride for the citizens, and a deterrent to potential invaders. Unfortunately, the Colossus's existence was relatively short-lived, An earthquake in the year 226 BC caused significant damage to the statue, toppling it to the ground. The people of Rhodes chose to not rebuild it, leaving its shattered remains. However, despite laying on the ground for 800 years, the Colossus was still so impressive that travellers made the journey to see it. In the year 653, an Arab force invaded Rhodes and took the remains back uh, to where they came from. While the statue is no longer standing, it remains a symbol of the human quest for art, culture and the celebration of monumental achievements. The Lighthouse of Alexandria The Lighthouse of Alexandria a magnificent beacon that once stood in the Egyptian city of Alexandria, is the final of the seven wonders of the ancient world I'll discuss today. In the 3rd century BC, the bustling city of Alexandria, founded by Alexander the Great, had become a major hub of trade and culture in the ancient world. Its fame as a centre of knowledge and commerce made it the ideal location for a grand lighthouse. The Lighthouse of Alexandria, also known as the Pharos of Alexandria, was designed to guide ships safely into the harbour. It was commissioned by Ptolemy II and constructed under the supervision of a famous architect. The structure soared to a height of over 100 metres, making it one of the tallest buildings of the ancient world. Its design featured three tiers, a square base, a cylindrical middle section, and a final circular section with a statue of one of the Greek gods on the top. The lighthouse's brilliance lay not only in its height, but also in its groundbreaking use of mirrors and fire. A massive central furnace or fire emitted a powerful light that was then reflected off polished bronze mirrors, casting a brilliant beam of light across the Mediterranean. The Lighthouse of Alexandria was not just a functional lighthouse, but also a symbol of the city's prosperity and the achievements of the ancient Greek world. It played a crucial role in aiding ships in navigation, ensuring their safe passage through the dangerous waters of the Mediterranean and helping Alexandria become a major trade centre. Regrettably, the Lighthouse of Alexandria met a fate similar to most of the wonders on this list. A series of earthquakes, 
including a particularly devastating one in the 14th century, led to the gradual destruction of the lighthouse. Today, its remains lie submerged beneath the waters of the Mediterranean or used in other buildings in the area. The legacy of the lighthouse, however, lives on. Its innovative use of technology, its role in maritime safety, and its symbolism as a beacon of knowledge and culture continue to inspire awe and admiration. So here is today's final thought. The seven wonders of the ancient world demonstrate the ingenuity, artistry and cultural richness of ancient civilizations. While many of these remarkable structures have been lost to time, they continue to captivate our imagination and inspire awe. From the mystery of the Great Pyramid of Giza to the allure of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, Each wonder holds a unique place in history. They remind us of humanity's quest for greatness and the legacy of those who dared to dream and build on an extraordinary scale. But what do you think? There are only seven wonders on the list today. If you were to add an eighth wonder of the world, of the ancient world, what would you choose? Some good contenders come from places outside of the ancient Greek world. Think the Great Wall of China, uh, the pyramids uh, of Chichen Itza in Mexico, or uh, there's many, many all around the world, right? Temples, shrines, uh, great archaeological uh, digs around the world. So what would you choose as the eighth wonder of the world? Let me know by leaving a comment on Spotify, a comment on uh, the Thinking in English Instagram page, um, or you can comment on the transcript on the blog. And I want to remind you to head over to the transcript. If you are a Patreon subscriber, the transcript is even better. There is an extended vocabulary list, vocabulary activities, um, and an interactive transcript as well. So all of that is just from $5 a month. Right? All Patreon subscribers, no matter how much you, you contribute, uh, can access the website, can access these extra resources. And this episode had quite a lot of new vocabulary, so I'd recommend heading over and uh, subscribing to Patreon and checking out the extended vocabulary list. But thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>